All right, guys, this is exciting. It's season finale time for Jan's opening clinic, number 22, which means you have to stay tuned for the giant cliffhanger at the end that we will let linger until the start of season 23. Nah, I'm kidding. You're not missing anything. We are just going to answer nine more opening questions and hopefully learn something in the process. And by answer, I mean talk about. I'm not sure I have any answers. A lot of tough questions in this show. So let's get to the action. And we start with Mr. Lushin and his parachute. Lushin's parachute is saying, Hi Jan, against the Philidor. I've played Shirov's sharp G4 line a couple of times. However, I'm not sure I completely trust the main line. According to the database, E4, D6, D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, E5, Knight F3, Knight BD7, G4, Knight G4, Rook G1, Knight GF6, Bishop C4, H6, Bishop B3, C6, D, E, D, Queen D3, B5, Bishop B3, Queen A5, castles, long castles, Bishop A6. Is white fighting for an advantage or just trying to prove compensation? Are there alternatives along the way? Thank you. Oof. Pawn sacrifice that early on. Scary. Can't you just keep your pawns and develop the pieces? And I have to admit, I've never studied this G4 line in great detail. I could stumble into this position normally, yeah, like D4, D6, E4, but I'd probably be a bishop C4 guy, you know, castles, play A4, and be slightly better and have the same number of pawns as your opponent. So. The usual disclaimer, don't really know what I'm talking about here and so on. But let's look at Lucian's line. G4, knight g4, rook g1, knight gf6, bishop c4, threatening some nasty knight g5, so h6 is what they do. And bishop to e3. There are some alternatives to bishop e3, we'll get to them later. Looking at the position, it does look like compensation. Now we are some tempi up in development, we have the half open g file. But black is very solid indeed. And yeah, it's not something I would be too happy to go for as white normally. C6, D takes E, D takes E and Queen to D3. Once again, very logical, trying to mobilize quickly. But it does seem like black is on time with this B5. Funky sacrifices don't quite work, like Bishop F7 or whatever. So you have to go Bishop B3, Queen A5, long castles. And after bishop a6, funny looking move, but threatening b4, getting some time to develop. Yeah, I can only tell you what my computer tells me, which is that after knight d2, that seems like the best move. Um, white is in business and has roughly enough compensation, but it's not like white is pushing here. If I'm interpreting the, whatever it gives it, bigger depths, minus 0, 0.15 or something correctly, Black has some options here, g5, g6. Rook d8 strikes me as the most natural. Just preparing for action along the d-file. And then the computer gives queen f1 as a cute little move, sidestepping the d-file maybe. Trying to help with some looming f4 push. However, I don't think that black should be too troubled by this, even after g6, it does seem. Like he's in the game. So against a well-prepared opponent, I'm not sure how often I would dare to go here. So g6 is also g5, maybe more radical way to deal with this push. But white does keep his chances here. It's not like I could fully exhaust this h4 or queen to h3. So in a practical game over the board, I believe there are some chances. However, if you played the line a couple times, I would normally expect your opponent to be well booked up. Maybe they would go for some funky move. That is not rook d8, but this immediate g5. And know their terrain well enough. Therefore, yeah, it's an interesting position and the better prepared player should have an edge here. It's so complicated that it's very, very hard to find your way with just common sense, at least for me it would be. And I wouldn't call it unplayable, but yeah, I, it's also not territory that I would fancy going for with the white pieces, but that might be more stylistic. 
And also, I'd like the surprise value if I launch this G4. Mm -hmm. So if you played a couple times, I wouldn't be such a big fan. One alternative, which I'm not sure if it's great, but which did pop up on my computer screen, is after h6 to not play bishop to e3, but to go for queen e2. And one idea seemed to be to play bishop b3, followed by queen to c4 in some lines. So c6, you go here. And this is somewhat of a menace for black to deal with. So I can't really say this is the end for the line for black. I think my computer at bigger depth gave some funky move like queen to e7 and he was defending. But it could be a direction worth looking into if you're looking for an alternative. Um, as I said, now this really my cup of tea, but it really depends on your style and your appetite for both risk and doing work in these lines. Because the better prepared player should have an edge here. Then again, if I played the Philidor, this would be very high on my to-do list because it's sort of the line where you can lose by force without making a move if you're not well prepared. So I'm not sure at a high level how many people you would catch off guard with this g4. But to answer the question, I believe, objectively speaking, it's good enough to equalize, but not good enough to win the game, which yeah, is sort of how it should be. Like, white gets enough activity, but black's defenses are solid, and therefore my preference will still be bishop to c4. Not sure if that helped at all. Lucien's parachute. Um, I can't really make up my mind if I endorse this G4 move or not. Let's see if I endorse Samurai 29's question. He's saying, Hi Jan, I read the excellent quality chess book on the Queen's Gamut Decline written by Nikos and Tierless, but found something that wasn't covered and I'm not so sure about. The position arises after d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, bishop e7, bishop g5, knight b7, e3, h6, bishop h4, castles, rook c1, c5, dc5, dc4. I'll put it on the board. Now I think black has no problems after bishop c4, knight c5, agree, but I got annoyed by 10c6, also agree, looks very logical, break in the pawn structure, which I had to face over the board against the GM and unfortunately lost. I tried bc, bishop c4 when I played knight b6, as I had looked at it briefly with an engine before the game, but I still felt a little skeptical about it. I hear you. I also noticed that Kramnik stopped playing dc4 in favor of knight c5, cd, g5, and so on and so forth. However, I couldn't really bring myself to like this for black. So which one would you go for? Or would you avoid c5 altogether and go for something like hc6? And I agree with everything you're saying and I think you're right. As usual, I'm not sure I have a <clears throat> solution to the problem. Those are the critical lines in that territory. Let's put them on a chessboard. C4, E6, let's say this, this. Bishop E7, Bishop G5, Knight BD7, E3, H6, Bishop H4, castles. In general, the idea of black setup is to force through C5 and simplify. So this Rook C1, after Rook C1, you mentioned C6, that's yeah. If you really dislike the positions after C5, C6, is sort of playable, but it doesn't really feel in line with Black's setup thus far. And I'd still prefer white after bishop d3, there's other moves as well, like a3, playing this usual game of chicken, because after bishop d3 you can take on c4 and then maybe go b5 or knight d5. So there are these options like a3 or queen c2 here as well. You know, after queen c2 in these positions, I've normally thought, oh, I'm not mixing up something, that setups would just be six, bishop b7, rook c8. Aren't so black for aren't so bad for black. But theoretically speaking, I believe you're right about everything you're saying after 
tc5, tc4, c6 clearly looks like the critical move breaking up the black pawn structure and I also would not feel that comfortable here after bc bishops take c4 because you know these pawns are weaknesses long term. I I've also had a look at Antilles' book and I do recall he was speaking that this about these a7 and c6 pawns sometimes being not so bad but I'd be very uncomfortable having them over the board. That was not in this line, but in a related structure recently. This game, Carlson Nakamura. Nakamura ultimately lost, where he also accepted this pawn structure. And yeah, I'm not a big fan. It might be tenable, and but yeah, I wouldn't go for it either. So I believe Kramnik, as he usually is, is onto something when he goes for knight takes c5. I just had front row seat to this line because it was also played by Yu Yang Yi I think twice at the Olympiad once against Ivanchuk maybe and once against Erwin Lamy and he seemed fairly comfortable defending this position which once again is a matter of taste I think if you're well enough prepared here the black pieces are active enough to hold this but I also hear you that I don't think I could bring myself to like this type of position structure whatever we want to call it with the black pieces mm yeah even just after bishop b2 i mean you can check out what kramnik and yu yang yi have been doing here and they know their stuff if such top players repeatedly go for this line i'm sure they're convinced that objectively black faces no issues here or that his position is very defendable so from a theoretical perspective I guess this is the line to go for and hold. I'm not a giant fan either and probably, well, I don't play much Queen's Gambit declined, but I would still lean more towards one of the old school lines with b6 or whatever they call this, the Lasker, this knight e4 stuff. Instead of this knight b7 business. But it's a matter of taste. With black, if you play forcing lines and try to equalize, often you will have to accept some drawback like here long term this isolated pawn or after c6 you might not fully equalize however yeah I think you're completely right and those are the critical lines where it's sort of a pick your poison situation if you want to stick with this line if not yeah I don't think there's anything considered to be wrong with knight e4 either but not a big specialist in this field Sorry, I could mainly just repeat what you said, but that's because I agree with everything. My advice, if you want to stick with line, would probably be yeah, to just bite the bullet and look at this knight takes c5, cd, g5 positions a little closer. But yeah, they don't look like much fun, I'll admit. The old bum, let's see if he sounds like fun. He says, hi Jan, thanks for answering my last question, even though I didn't ask about a legal position. You did well, but I'll double check my question today. Thanks, the old bum. When I looked at the Tchampovsky line, d4, knight f6, bishop g5, e6, e4, h6, bishop f6, queen f6, c3, d5, e5, mistake in my opinion, queen d8, knight f3, c5. Some time ago, I found that my machine liked h c4 for black after both a3 and bishop d3. What do you think of this recommendation? And first of all, I think that's a bad line for white. I think you should not be playing it. <clears throat> Which is a bit odd because I also had this internal discussion in my younger days as a Trompovsky player where I thought, okay, this has to be great for white. No, we exchanged our quote unquote bad dark square bishop and we have all the right pieces left for the structure. But if you look at it a bit further, it's not really true. This bishop is sort of important and black has fairly simple play here with c5, knight c6. So I think this position, yeah. It's not good enough for having giving up the bishop. Now to the question after knight f3, c5, a3. This is sort of a thing where 20 years ago we used to laugh at computers giving c5 to c4 in this position saying, ha, look at these stupid machines. They don't understand anything. They're releasing the tension in the center when it's clear that we should put pressure against c4, giving white a free hand. But I have to say, especially after a3, I sort of like the c4 move. It makes sense to me. We follow up with knight c6, bishop e7, bishop d7. We have a very simple built-in plan, b5, a5, b4. 
And the white initiative on the king side looks very, very slow to me, especially now that we've stopped bishop d3 and bishop c2. So, looks like a very decent move. Not the only decent move to make in this position, certainly. I do think that black is very fine if he goes knight to c6 as well. <clears throat> so, in general, yeah, not a fan of this territory. After bishop d3, yeah, my computer doesn't give c4 here. He wants other moves like knight c6. He seemed quite happy about intending to meet castles with g5 very aggressively, trying to punish white for his lack of, I don't know, lack of dark square bishop. But even here, c4, here I'd be a little more skeptical about it. But in general, I very much believe in black in the structure. Here I'm a little more skeptical about it because after both bishop e2 or bishop c2, white still has the option to try to undermine on the queen side with b3, which is tougher if you have a3. But even this with b5, once again, the white attack, quote unquote attack on the king side, looks very slow and there's not even a defined target yet. So I'm gonna have to agree with the computer beast that probably this, even this is okay for black, but as I said, I don't think it's forced and I think black has many options here and that this is just a line to avoid with white. If you wanna play this position, you should instead keep the tension. Play knight to d2, when, yeah, black typically blows c5, hoping for e5, queen d8, and we're back in business. But here white has other moves, like knight to f3 or bishop b5 check, which look playable, not giving white an edge necessarily, but this I thought was sort of playable, knight c6, knight f3, or bishop d7, maybe that's the best way to play. Bishop takes knight bd7, ed5. After ED, you can at least say, haha, you have an isolated pawn after DC5. Well, if they go CD, that was also legal, but at least it leads to some weird looking positions like knight f3, DC, knight e4. I guess black is equal, but it looked like a better bet to me than <clears throat> the immediate e5 when I think the positions are really quite pleasant. Maybe not knight e4, maybe knight e2 here. So I keep mixing up my lines. But overall, yeah, it's not it's not a line I'm a big fan of for white. Because I like bishops and I believe, yeah, that this is fairly good territory for black who got the bishop pair and a very sound structure after just four moves. And the white lead in development is not that great that it should cause black concern, technically. Yeah, white hasn't developed any piece yet, or the white center is not that mighty, that it offers a great deal of compensation for the bishops. So not a line I was ever very fond of normally. When I played the Trompovsky in this position, I would play some boring move like e3 or knight f3 or knight d2. Knight d2 maybe has the most venom. Excellent movie, by the way. At least keeping the option of e4 open, even though black is supposed to be fine here after, let's say, c5 as well. So, yeah, I'm a bit stuck here from the white perspective too, but I really dislike after some study these positions after e5, queen d8. I think black is just doing excellently and you should stay away from them in favor of knight to d2 or even bishop to d3. One of these cases where even though one thinks against the bishop pair, it makes sense to close the position. If you close it, you also, yeah, lose the bit of momentum of initiative that maybe white could generate here and just make it reasonably easy for black to get his setup. And I take black in this position all day long, which is not what we want with white after six moves. So my advice, the old bum, is to stay away from that line, which yeah, also took me some time to realize it because it looks like, logically speaking, it looks very nice to build this pawn chain without the bad bishop and so on, but I couldn't get it to work. Then we have Mr. Smashing Lead. I think there's another question where I'll have little to add and to agree. Like people are getting too good at openings. I can't teach you guys anything anymore. Smashing Lead is saying, hi Jan, so the kids are all going nuts about this new anti Nidorf thing with two knight c3, e4, c5, knight c3, d6, d4, cd, queen, d4, knight c6, queen, d2, and then b3. And I'm keen to get involved myself. Yeah, that's in one of the better anti Nidorf lines. 
In order to go to knight c3 though, I gotta be ready for this annoying 2a6, which has great stats, possibly due to circumstantial stuff rather than its objective merits, I don't know. I also realized that actually, I checked correspondence games, black is doing excellently after 2a6. What do you reckon for a sharp approach to this position? Match, I don't know that word. The equivalent line, e4, c5, knight c3, a6, d4, cd, queen d4, knight c6, queen d2, knight f6, b3, doesn't work because the bishop isn't blocked in by the pawn on d6 and can land on b4 and force through the break d5. I don't really want to go into closed lines with 3f4 or 3g3 unless I can get favorable versions and the bishop b5 stuff is out obviously. All thoughts, comments, ruminations appreciated as ever, smashing lad. And yeah, my main thought is that you're right and I also don't know what to do, which is probably, once again, not the answer you're looking for. But I agree that this 2a6 line looks pretty sensible. Hmm. So the line Smashing Lad was talking about is this line from, for example, the game Carlson Wojtaszek, which, yeah, I'm not sure how great it is, but at least it's a fresh, funny looking direction. With this b3 bishop b2 along castles. But neither of players can play 2a6. Sorry, without jeopardizing their repertoire, because if we try to move one of them here, let's say knight e2, they can still go, for example, knight f6 and after. Well, d4 would be a bit silly here anyway, because here, I believe black has this one trick, e5, which normally works well in such positions. But if they just wanted the knight off, they could also just go d6. So, I was thinking about stuff like knight e2, knight f6, g3. Then, let's say black goes d6, because he's a knight off player. We go bishop g2 and wait for black to commit to something. If he goes g6, you could go d4, and a6 doesn't really fit in. Well, after e6, d4, the a6 also seems a little early, and many knight of players wouldn't like this Schevening type of structure after c4, knight d4. So I thought that could be smart, but then I started, well, I didn't think very hard, but I started checking correspondence games, and here they just played e5, and they still seem to be quite okay with the resulting positions. I guess you're down to some stuff like this, or well, there's different variations of it with g3, bishop g2, or an earlier f4. But I also, in the brief time I spent looking, couldn't find anything I was too happy with. I probably yeah, go for some position like this and play f4 here and take it from here. But it's not like black is suffering and his setup does look fairly harmonious after just bishop e7, so I understand. You're not really looking for a close Sicilian, you're looking for a way to move order black into some funky open Sicilian, but 2a6 does seem to stop that fairly efficiently. I also agree that d4 is not great here because of takes, takes, knight c6, queen d2, knight f6. Like worst case scenario, you could play different move than b3 here. b3 is bad because of e6, followed by bishop b4, as you mentioned. You can probably play knight f3 when e6 is no longer great because of e5, knight g4, queen f4, f5, a3, and white should be better. Hmm. But of course e6 is not forced, and after d6, the knight on f3 probably doesn't really match with your schemes to go b3, bishop b2, and long castle here after b3, g6, I'm guessing. Black is doing fairly all right as well. But yeah, if you want to get that type of position, even giving black a bit of a discount, you could try starting with knight f3, which more or less seems to strongly motivate them to go d6 or e5. But I keep saying but. The truth is, I don't know, this looks like a good line. And then yeah, you're down to choosing between f4 stuff here, these types of positions where in correspondence black has been scoring fairly well. All the other stuff I mentioned, starting with knight e2 and then g3, or the direct g3. But it's not like a6 won't be a useful move down the stretch. So I'm with you. a6 takes a bit of the fun out of 
trying to move our people into this knight c3, d6, d4, or I'm assuming the plan is knight c6, knight f3, or knight g e2, because knight of players can't really play those positions after d4. So, yeah, sorry, once again, I agree, and I also wouldn't be too thrilled to play this with white. 2a6 does look like a very annoying move. Chess for Life is asking, hi Jan, what is your recommendation for studying and then remembering an opening? Hmm, another question where I can say, yeah, I don't really know. In general, this might sound a bit strange, but I think, and I've talked about this in previous shows, that people are too worried about the remembering, memorizing part. If you do studying of the openings, the studying itself will help tremendously in the remembering because you think about stuff and you look for options and that already familiarizes you with it. So it will be very different than just trying to memorize pages from a chess book or computer lines. So for me, the studying part has always been more important than the remembering part. I never really worry about remembering the stuff I looked at until I try to repeat some lines directly before a game when then yeah you go through whatever files or whatever books you have and you try to put it into your short-term memory but there i've also struggled and i feel i've studied i've struggled less <clears throat> if i've studied the line in more detail so my general advice even though it might sound stupid is don't worry too much about the memorizing part and the big amounts of theory one has to memorize. If you look at the lines and look for moves and try to figure out why is this good and why is this not good, then the memorizing part comes much easier. Well, I'm speaking like a guy who's been half retired for a while because I've certainly made the mistake in tournaments, in my opinion, that I tried to memorize too much before games preparing for three, four, five hours, which is insane because, first of all, your head can't or at least my head can't keep that much information. And secondly, you drain your own energy before the game. Therefore, what all the strong players tell you is, I'm not sure if all of them do, but some of them do, is you have to work and study the lines at home. And then don't worry too much about the memorizing. Try to repeat them. Your lines a bit before the game. But it's the work itself will already be, even though you don't feel about it as memorizing the lines will already be tremendously helpful in just building a knowledge base and then getting back to it. Also, even if you can't recall your notes exactly, which has happened to me and I think to everybody a million times while you're playing games, then still, if you looked at it, you'll have a better feel for the position and your hand will just have a better chance of making the right moves. Be it because your subconscious does remember, even though you feel like I can't remember anything or because you just, yeah, recognize the patterns of certain variations better than you're used to. Like, I don't really know how our memory works, but I do know that it pays off for confidence and whatever knowledge if you study stuff. But I don't have any memorizing techniques for the lines. And I've certainly been guilty or not guilty of clicking through files before games and trying to throw all that stuff into my head. Normally, it doesn't work that well, especially if you are if you have like an hour to prepare and you also switch on your engine and you try to prepare lines and then keeping them into your head while stressing out about, oh, I have nothing against 2a6 or I have nothing against that and against that. That's always a tricky spot to be in, even though all chess players do find themselves in it more often than we'd like to. So short story, more studying, less memorizing or worrying about remembering. G. Lucky is saying, Hi Jan, which system do you recommend for white in the pure form of the a6 love? d4, d5, c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, a6. Thanks for your videos. It's one of those, first of all, you don't get it that often, and then I normally switch around there quite a bit, or at least I have throughout my long unsuccessful chess career. I do think that white has different ways to seriously pro black and play for an advantage here. 
what I'll normally do over the board, especially if I'm sort of unprepared, is to go e3 here, because this territory, because of all the move orders I've also employed over the years with e3. And then knight c3, or with knight c3. Knight f6, e3, a6. Knight f3. It has always sort of felt familiar to me. Therefore, when I'm prepared, I'll normally go here. Of course, you have to deal with several black options. b5 is a move. b5, b3, this kind of stuff. And after g4. I think why is many interesting moves. Like I used to dabble with bishop d2. Recently, I thought queen c2 could be an interesting move here. Even the old main line with bishop e2, bishop b2 is not really exhausted. So there's that. There is these lines with bishop to f5, which have been quite popular recently. But why also has many interesting moves here? Bishop e2, knight e5, queen b3, cd5, bishop d2. Any one of those is a serious challenge for black. So normally, yeah, I just try to pick one and hope I can remember anything about it. Like, given from the last question. But I don't think this is an easy territory for black to defend. Same can be said about e6. When white faces, yeah, sort of a principal choice if he wants to close a position with c5 or if he wants to go b3. I generally don't like close positions that much, so probably I would go b3 here. Where, yeah, the theoretical debates are ongoing, but white has fair chances for an advantage, in my opinion. <clears throat> Having said all that, of course, starting with knight f3, and knight c3 does give us the luxury to play other moves here. One move that's always been close to my heart, I'm not sure I'm recommending it, but I always have a spot for transposing back to the exchange slav now that black is committed to a6, not promising an edge necessarily, but this territory I've always thought was a bit underrated, even though now more, more and more people do it as white, so maybe not so underrated anymore. But I always thought that white has some chances for an edge here as well. And then, yeah, there's the more principle, like c5. I'm not much of a specialist here. I believe after knight bd7, bishop f4, white nowadays does pretty well. Like they do stuff like rook c1 or queen c2 here. And they've tended to get pretty good positions with this h3, intending to put the bishop back to f4 without being harassed by knight h5, because now we can go to h2. So that's been working well. For white. I was always somewhat more concerned about bishop f5 here, when I never really knew what to do. Like white's choice is queen b3 is a move, bishop f4 is the main line. After knight bd7, e3, I thought black was sort of defending with his knight h5 stuff, even though I have to admit I haven't spent time here for a while. Hmm. So yeah, I don't like the nature of these positions that much, so probably wouldn't be my first choice, even though if I put my objective hat on, I would say, yeah, this looks logical. This could be a way to play for the max. Last but not least, I also have sympathy for the move queen to c2, which is a very sharp, fresh, direct attempt, trying to punish black. Black's best choice here, because white, sort of threatening e4, is to grab the pawn, dc, e4, b5, but like in many similar positions, nowadays people are quite comfortable gambiting this pawn for long-term compensation. And this stuff after a CBAB is surprisingly dangerous territory for black to navigate. It's the type of position that I would only enter if I felt well prepared for that particular game and had either done some work or <laughs> looked at some files before, because you are a pawn down and I'm still very chicken about being a pawn down. So I normally wouldn't do it unprepared. But I do feel this is territory where work could pay off and where black has to be extremely precise. Like after both to g4 or pawn to e6 in order to make it out of the opening. So long answer, giving a bunch of options. I would probably play e3. I'm not sure that's the most principled move. I'd probably play e3 or cd5. I do feel like c5 or queen c2 are the most principled move. C5, more long-term from a strategic point of view, we try to exploit A6 and then develop this bishop. Well, Queen C2 is very direct, leading to an infight. Where Why is a pawn down, but has nice compensation in the form of a full pawn center and some lead in development. I hope that helped. Pick one.
Mm. Mr. G. Lucky. Then we have Marchok Gwyn saying, Hi, Jan. Hope this is not too late. Well, you're getting an answer. <laughs> I hope the answer doesn't come too late. Because, yeah, the questions have been out there for a while. Um, and thanks for answering the non-question last time. See, I should work on my memory. I can't remember what your non-question was. In the Italian, Delchev recommends a line with bishop g5, but holding back c3. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, d3, bishop c5, castles, castles, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, bishop e7, bishop g3, d6, a4, king h8, h3, put it on the board, h3, knight h7, knight c3. And white seems well placed to meet the f5 plan. What do you think of this idea? These Italian players are cunning blighters with a move order trick and I don't think this is covered in your video series. Keep up the good work and best wishes for the Olympiad. Thank you. Olympiad didn't go as well as hoped, but we had a good time, so maybe it did go. Well, after all. But yeah, the result was disappointing. Um, I'm too lazy to look up my video series. I have a feeling I did talk about it but I will trust your actual viewing over my vague recollection. So we're talking about this position after castles, castles, and now the direct bishop g5. One point that I hope I made in this video series, or that in general I'd like to make, if I didn't make in the video series, I'll make it here, but I think I mentioned it in the video series, is that yeah, the standard reaction to these bishop g5s is h6, bishop h4, and now we go back with the bishop to unpin which was the conventional knowledge. If black hasn't played d6 yet, he goes h6, bishop h4, and then bishop e7. But here recently, white players have come up with some sneaky lines, like the one you mentioned, bishop g3, d6, a4. <clears throat> so one point, which I'll get to later, is that I think it's interesting to not play h6, but to immediately play bishop e7 in order not to allow this white bishop to drop back to the g3 square. Um, however, having allowed it to go here, I have two quick thoughts. I'm not sure how smart they are. First of all, I don't think black is committed to going king h8 and knight h7 here. Aronian always plays as king h8. It's his favorite plan. Then removing the knight and going for f5. And with good results, but it's not the only way to handle the position here. Like you could go for a more traditional Spanish approach, playing knight a5, a2, c5, then put the knight back to c6, go rook to e8, bishop f8, bishop e6 when appropriate. And normally, even if white goes knight c3, knight e5, you say, yeah, congratulations. I'll exchange pieces that come towards the d5 square. I'll go bishop e6. And are you sure your bishop is so well placed on g3? So yeah, this, I do think is a rather playable direction. And also in the line you mentioned after king h8, how bad is this? h3, knight h7, knight c3, f5. f4 is a threat, so I'm guessing e takes f5, bishop takes f5, and knight to d5, knight to f6. This position didn't look that bad for black to me. My computer gives something like rook e1 takes, bishop takes d5, and bishop to f6, when I'm not sure if this is such a tragedy for black, a5, a6. It looks like the pieces are fairly decently coordinated and out there. Still not sure if I would go for this with black, but it doesn't look like such a bad position to me. So now to my other point, which I hope makes sense. That, yeah, we don't have to allow this bishop to drop back here. Sort of with tempo. And we can also start with bishop to e7. Which might have some pluses. First of all, if white plays some slow move here like a4, I think d5 apparently works. I think it apparently works, according to my computer. Um, when ed knight d5, just fine for black. And bishop f6, d takes c4, the computer yells 0, 0, queen e7, d c4, even though we're pawn down, he develops very quickly with bishop g4, rook to d8, some f5 slooming, some queen to b4 or queen c5. Compi was reasonably happy here with this position, so this could be one sharpish idea. A more boring idea 
could be in this position to now play h6. Now the white has committed to h4. Say, so play that game. You want to play bishop g3. I will not allow you to do it. And I will offer the exchange of this guy before it gets there with knight h5, which also looks doable to me. Bishop e7, queen e7. Always important to check for knight e5 tricks, but they don't work here. Takes, takes, and knight c3. Here we have to play some funny looking move like knight b4. Made possible by a4. But seemed reasonably sensible as well. Generally, if we exchange these bishops and nothing too terrible happens, black is quite comfortable there. So after bishop e7, especially to avoid this d5 push, I guess the move for white is knight to c3 anyway. When we continue delaying h6 for a bit, play d6. Now we're threatening to grab this bishop with knight to a5, so white probably should play a4. And here I'm not sure how much sympathy I have for this, but it looked like a fresh direction exploiting that white has played knight to c3, which is to actually give up this bishop. Not a common thing to do in these structures, because it's a nice bishop to have. But black gets some pluses in return, it's like d5, looming. And I thought this could be a playable line as well at higher depth. The computer gave zeros here too. So I thought, yeah, this could be an interesting direction if you're looking for a more kinky move in these positions. You can also play knight to b4, which looks a bit dumb, but does cover the d5 square. And generally I thought this bishop back to e7 without h6 could be a sort of underestimated area now that everybody's so happy playing with bishop to g3 and h3. I hope I've given you a viable option there or somewhere within my mumbling and rumbling. Now if you thought I haven't provided decent answers to the last questions, then you're in for a real treat. In this one, by Chess Capismus, because the Open Spanish, even though, yeah, we had a question about it, I think, a couple shows ago, is another one of these areas where I'm not very comfortable giving expert opinions, because I'm not an expert, I'm not an E4 player, and I'm not an Open Spanish player. So, plus the structures are so weird and move by move direct that I've never really felt comfortable weighing in, which I guess I've also talked about in the past. So Chess Capismo saying, hi Jan, I remember a live show where you were talking about the very topical open Spanish, e4, e5, knight f3, and so on and so forth, d4, b5, bishop b3, d5, d, e5, bishop e6. That time you said people once preferred knight bd2, but very recently sometimes switched to knight c3, and you haven't figured out why. Yeah, still sort of the case, like I take notice of recent games, but I Really, yeah, still don't have a PhD in all these open Spanish move bars. Anyway, Cheska Pismo C says, I see falling critical lines. Knight b2, bishop e7, c3, d4. That would hang the knight, so I'm guessing you mean knight c5, bishop c2, d4, knight b3, which is extensively analyzed by Michalewski, gm13. Yeah, and extensively played the latest outing, which I think I talked about in an opening click we did after the Olympiad as well, was... Karana against Mohamed Yarov, where Karana won a very nice game. So we'll put it on the board in a second. But yeah, this is still very much a better ground for the best of the best. Then 9c3, bishop c5, with interesting play, according to gm13. And c3, bishop e7, bishop c2, or bishop e3, or rook e1, or castles knight bd2, f5, which gives very good drawing chances, but hardly more. Actually, I'm interested for both sides. Maybe you, you can tell a bit more about it now. Thanks. Not really, it sounds like, once again, this is becoming a problem. I should know more stuff. But it sounds like you know more than I do about the territory already. Generally, the open Spanish is very much back in business as an established mainline, the very top players, the likes of and Mamed Yarov. Vidit Giri play with white and also in correspondence has been very popular because of its forcing nature. So it's a very respectable opening for sure. And I still struggle a bit 
sorting out what goes where and why. As you mentioned, this line, I'm sure, will remain trendy for quite a while. This d4, knight b3, d3, where white can go knight takes c5 and we get some boring endgame. Or he can go for it with bishop to b1 there. Yeah. Tons of options down the stretch. The latest that I talked about in a recent opening clinic is this game, Karana against Mamadiarov, where Karana won a nice game. But if you switch on your computer, I'm sure you will be able to localize, localize, find, find a defense there as well. So this nine c3, the point is after bishop e7, now we don't transpose to this stuff with knight b2, but play a different move along the lines that you've mentioned. And this, yeah, is another very topical line where white has a bunch of options. The recent, most recent game that caught my attention like I know these old lines where they go knight d4, I think you take, take c5, knight e6, queen e6, and then white tries all kinds of moves, like something with f3, knight g5, and now a4 or queen e1, I think I mentioned recently. And I've also seen that someone who was a Vitugov, I think Vitugov maybe, against Vidit, experimented with playing queen to e1 in this very position, which I haven't checked much yet, but Vitugov is a serious theoretician. So people are still coming up with fresh ideas here. The game was something like a5 to d4, I can't recall. And it looked like white got a good position. Well, Compi was also indicating knight to d8 as a possible continuation. So yeah, these are very topical battlegrounds and battlegrounds that I'm not that tuned in with. I do agree with the general notion. There's a ton of correspondence games, people making here. That is supposed to be a solid line for black, but that it has very limited upside in terms of winning chances. So the alternative is this move, bishop to c5, and here, just talking about what I've seen recently. Once again, disclaimer, I'm not sure what's critical, what's not, but I've seen recently that Giri, I think he beat Anand in a rapid game with queen to d3, which looked well, to me at least, like a fresh direction, just preparing to put this bishop here. After castles, bishop to e3. It looked like black still had some questions to answer. What was it, like f6, ef, queen f6, knight b2. And once the f-pawn disappears and there's pieces on the board, I'm often on white side because of the weakened nature of the black king, even though, yeah, the computer won't yell in these types of positions either. I could see it. Knight d2 or queen d2, I'm not sure. Probably queen d2 looks more logical. Oh yeah, this looks like hunting grounds for something of an edge for white as well. So, yeah, those are the things I've seen recently. The open Spanish, yeah, I've never been that attracted with black because you can see it from this very small segment and the one we did a couple of opening clinics ago. White does have a rather wide choice here, queen e2, rook d1, and c3, bishop e3, knight b2, and in all the lines black has to know a lot of stuff, normally just quote-unquote, which is normal for black, trying to equalize, but the upside didn't seem that great. So I think it's a very sort of professional opening, I think it's great in correspondence chess because against the computer it will be very hard for white to ever prove anything, but Practically speaking, so far I've shied away from the amount of work it takes to get this going with black because of all the options white has. And I hope I've given you some food for thought here. The c3, queen, t3 I recently realized looked very interesting. Or this queen e1 idea by Vitigov. Or this Karana Mamadiarov game for some directions to check more deeply. But the open Spanish, it's certainly back and it's certainly a playable opening for both sides. With black, yeah, it issue the warning that it seems like a lot, a lot of work because the positions aren't easy to understand either, like what's good, what's bad, where are we in trouble. I struggle a bit with it, but I do believe that is a worthy direction to explore. That brings us to the very final question of this clinic and 
Thankfully, it's not a broad topic, but it's a specific question, which I can answer very quickly. No, oh, not. Hi, Jan. Would you give me any advice on how to start playing 1e4 and build my repertoire? Thanks a lot. Okay, it's kind of a broad topic and not that specific. And I have not played 1e4 since, well, regularly, I should say, since I was about 12 years old. So, tough. So I'll give my usual speech. Play mainlines. Don't be afraid of your opponents knowing too much theory. No one does. Everyone just thinks everybody else knows all the mainlines, so we have to play junk to surprise them. It's not like that. Play mainlines and you'll be surprised that it will help your chess and your results. So what are mainlines? I don't know. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. I'd still recommend the Rui Lopez, even though I don't know how to get an edge against the Open Spanish, against the Marshal, against the Berlin. But you still get a board full of pieces with so many direct, decent options and choices that I believe it's better territory than just playing the Joko Piano in every game, even though at the highest level nowadays those two are almost equally popular. So yeah, I'd go Spanish, go a6, bishop a4. And knight f6, depending on your appetite for pieces. If you like pieces on the board, you can play d3. If you like simplified, somewhat better, with zero risk, you can play this stuff. Or if you like endings, you can try banging your head against the burling wall. If we're pragmatic and new and building a repertoire, I might just go for this and, you know, cut out some work. What other openings are there? There's a Petrov. That's a pretty good opening, once again. I'd go with main lines here. That means either knight to c3 or pawn to d4. I haven't refuted any of those lines either. But I do believe that these still offer the best chances for an advantage. If you're really an endgame fan, you can look into queen e2. And after queen e7, either d3 or knight to c3, as Kramnik played in the candidates, I believe, against Caruana. These endgames, I don't think they're dead, and Kramnik probably doesn't play him to make a draw. But not really. My cup of tea. The good news is most players don't play the Petrov. You'll meet knight c6 a ton more. Knight f6. At least in Bantam. What else is C6, I don't know, I normally recommend either knight c3, d5, knight f3, or d5, d5, e5, depending on my mood. There's also e, d, c, d, bishop, d3, which is making a bit of a comeback, which was mentioned in Sopico's video series. Generally, these are, I think, great starting points for building an e4 repertoire. Sopico's done a bunch of series. Also, on how to have some time savers. If you don't feel like playing all these main lines that I'm talking about, for example, here, I this line, which is a very interesting, try as well, d3, followed by d4. So you could check that out against the Karakania. I believe there's more viable options against the French. Yeah, you can either go for the exchange if you're in time saving mode, like Sopico recommends, you can play knight c3 if you want to be Mr. Mainline guy. Of course, it's more work. You got to be ready for both bishop to b4 and knight to f6, but should probably give the best chances for advantage. Or you can go knight e2 if you say, you know what, I'll take it down the middle. Don't really want to exchange. Don't really want to get pinned. So I'll put the horsey on d2. Very playable move as well. Against the Sicilian, stuff is tough as well. And here, this is me. I don't really recommend this because I think in order to learn, one should go for the open Sicilians. And here, whatever floats your boat, bishop e3, bishop g5, h3 are all sharp main lines that I think offer a lot of learning potential. Bishop e2 or g3 are more positional alternatives that are very viable as well. But what I was going to say is here I'd be sort of tempted to take a shortcut and play bishop b5 check, to be perfectly honest with you. Even though nowadays even bishop b5 check knight d7 has become such a mainline that there are cheat codes anymore. 
Similar things can be said about two knight c6. Even after two knight c6, I think nowadays d4 and bishop b5 are fairly equal in popularity. Maybe, I haven't done any stats, maybe bishop b5 is already more popular. So if you don't feel like adding more openings like the Sveshnikov or the Khan, this is called the Khan, the time armor probably, or the Rouser to your, to your list, then going bishop b5, certainly in this position, but also after d6. Could be a bit of a shortcut. After e6, bishop b5 doesn't make much sense, so I think it's harder to find shortcuts here. You probably want to play d4, even though I'm aware that after d4, cd, knight d4, knight c6. We've still allowed the time off that I just tried to rule out. The knight c6. As for yeah, sidelines here, I'm not a big c3 guy. At some point I've dabbled with the idea of playing c4, but I don't think that's really hitting the mark either. So yeah, I've struggled finding a, an endorsable sideline here. Yeah, I'm not much of an e player. So hard to say. Were those the main openings? Yeah, against g6 or d6, just do whatever. Just put the pieces somewhere. Center adjacent and you'll be okay. I'm sure I'm forgetting some main opening. Scandinavian? Nah, that's not a main opening. Helikai? Nah. You'll be fine against those. So yeah, that was my building one e4 repertoire in six minutes speech. Um, I hope this will answer all your questions. Jorge CC. And I hope this, or I regret greatly that this brings us to the end of this iteration of our opening clinic. We'll be back with more clinics in the future. Keep an eye out for those. Thanks everybody for asking your questions. As usual, even though I don't always have the answers, I do think these things are very useful for me as well because not all the topics I've thought about and they certainly keep me fresh and sometimes give me new ideas or at least new areas to explore. So thanks, I feel like we've come, we've come a long way. That's a bit too full of pathos, but I feel like, yeah, people are really asking better and better questions and you can tell there's a lot of opening work done out there. So keep up the good work and see you guys in the next season. Thanks for watching this one.